Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I am your host, Sean Walchef. This is a Cali BBQ Media production. Today is a very special day because we are interviewing the great Katie Temple from Katie Temple Media Coaching. Um, it's amazing to think that a barbecue media company is now interviewing someone of your stature who has spent an illustrious career on broadcast television. You help CEOs and executives clarify their message for camera. And yet, here we sit at the LLS headquarters mm -hmm. for San Diego, Hawaii, for Leukemia Lymphoma Society, mm -hmm. um, because of a special connection, which was an audio connection to the Dave and Jeff podcast. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, welcome to the digital hospitality, first of all. Thank you. It's going to be hard for me not to barrel in and ask <laughs> you the questions. <laughs> well, let's, let's, uh, let's give the people that don't know, who is Katie Temple? Who is Katie Temple? Yes. Do you want... I want it all. Human, you want. I want human. Yes. You want human. I want to know what what compelled you. At what point was your oh shit moment where you're like, I think I can do that, especially in the sports media landscape. Back when, even today, it's hard for women to talk about sports. We have had La Tabitha Lipkin on the podcast. Mm -hmm. We have had Heather Myers on the podcast, and they've both told us the struggles, not just with the athletes, but you know, just with the system itself, mm -hmm. the way the system's set up. So right. when, when did, when did Kate, how, how old were you when you decided I can do that? I knew I wanted to be a sportscaster in high school. That was the aha moment. What, I grew, what year? Like which? Probably junior? junior and senior year. I, I grew up in a, in a very sports oriented family. I was a tomboy, still am. So I grew up loving sports and being out in the yard with all of my cousins playing football and basketball at Thanksgiving and Christmas and played all sports growing up, played softball for a year in college. So okay. I was a sports junkie growing up. And then when I was younger, obviously, it wasn't you, it's not that you could look at the WNBA and say, oh, this is what I want to do. When I remember when I was younger, I had a dream of being an Olympic volleyball player. That oh, was really? my dream. And uh, I grew up in a small town and in high school, what I town? don't know, Merced, that? California. Okay. Merced, California. I still love going back. Love being from there. And I had an opportunity. I don't remember the details, which is crazy, but I had an opportunity to do a local TV show. We had two, we had two other co-hosts. One gentleman did all the city, kind of the, the, the public affair things and business, and then someone else did kind of the color of, of Merced, and then because it's a big agriculture town. And then I did sports, and I got this great opportunity. And How old were you? I was in high school. You it were was in high kind school. of a so it was part of the te like it was through school probably. No, it was a kind of a city. It was kind of a city. We had a city station, kind of a small community station. Mm -hmm. Merced small, fifty thousand people. So it was a small community station. And what I what would be the equivalent in San Diego? Oh, not even not maybe maybe um, Channel Four a long time ago. Okay. But you can't really compare it because San Diego is so big and vast. Yeah, three and, million I mean, people. Merced at the time had one high school. Got it. I mean, now there's three. Okay. And there was the Merced College at the time, so they also had sports there. But I was covering Merced High, Atwater High, okay. and Merced Junior College. And so I got lucky enough to do have, have this sports opportunity. And I thought, I, I knew I loved it. And then I thought, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Now i got to figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I went to St. Mary's College, which I loved, but they didn't have a broadcast department. They had a journalism department. So I studied journalism, which was great because it really taught me about ethics of journalism and how to write long format and those kind of things. It was a great opportunity. How to write. How to, write. how to write. Did right. It, what else did it teach you? What did it teach you about video or Nothing audio? Nothing at that time. At that I mean, time. not to, I hate to do the whole old joke, but we well, didn't no, have any broadcast. It was all about writing at that time. It, the fascinating thing is the world that we live in that's dominated mm -hmm. by the smartphone and literally the blending of old media and new media and mm -hmm. realizing that everyone that has a specialty, they have a strength, but we also have to ask for help mm -hmm. because we, we all we all can't know everything that's happening with you know how fast technology is changing and it's it's fascinating to see how journalism was taught or mm -hmm. how public relations were taught mm -hmm. you know and now thinking well how are they going to teach it today because that's a much different course very much so and again and i knew i wanted to do broadcast but i you, you do what you can at the time so i knew that that's what i wanted to do and i minored in spanish loved it traveled to spain fell in love with fell in love with spain tried to figure out how to 
make that work. In 1992, I worked at the Olympics in Barcelona. Very I, cool. I was not on TV yet, but I was working as a gopher, a production assistant for Sports Illustrated at, okay. at the time. And I was with the, I was managing, helping the manager manage all the film. So film, I mean, I have, wow. I have Polaroid shots that I took of the dream team. No way. Yes. The dream team, yes. get out of here. Yes. Dream team one. Yes. So, I mean, Amazing. Barcelona 92, yes. I was in there. And anyone, anyone that's worked. Get serious. Yeah. That is incredible. It was. It, and I was living there already, and I got this amazing opportunity, and I knew I was trying to merge the sports in Spanish. I couldn't figure it out. You were traveling with the Beatles, the equivalent of the yes, Beatles. Yes, yes. Like, the, the dream team in Barcelona mm -hmm. is, like, one of the most epic stories, sports stories of all time. I know, and it's funny, because if anybody has worked, anyone that works has worked at any Olympics or Pan Am Games or something where it's a short amount of time, even the even the, the Beatles Buick, the farmers open yes. right even you have so much to do it's a grind yes. right it's a grind and you know you're gonna go in and grind and then you'll be done so I was grinding 18 hours a day at the Absolutely. Olympics I was helping with film 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 it wasn't sexy at all what kind of film are we talking about photo photography yeah like Heinz Klutmeier one of the greatest I mean some who? of the greatest Heinz Klutmeier, Heinz Klutmeier, Klutmeier okay. who was the director of photography at the time I mean some of Sports Illustrated's greatest um, photographers were there. That's incredible. So I had one day off, maybe two for a couple hours. And this is a magazine, right? Uh -huh. Like they're only print. They, there's no digital side of Sports Illustrated. Not then. There's no video side of Sports no, Illustrated. No, 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 no. Isn't that crazy? Yes, yes. And I didn't get my first TV job until I was 26, and that was in Fresno, California. How did you get the Sports Illustrated job? Uh, I had a connection with one of the photographers at Sports Illustrated mm -hmm. through my mom. I got really lucky. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I don't think it's luck. A lot of what we find out in life is those opportunities, they present themselves in different ways. Right. You just have to be willing to ask. Ask. Also. And that's exactly it. My mom is on the phone of, with a friend of hers. Beautiful. And I was just getting done. I was, you know, college was done and I was ready to rock and roll. So that was. That's incredible. It I was. can't believe you were there. I still have. I still have pictures. I still have everything. And they were smoking teams by 100 points. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was incredible. Yes. It yes. was literally like one of the greatest things ever. Mm -hmm. So you go from from Barcelona, then what? Then what's the next Barcelona? The next so were you work? Were you actually getting a paycheck from Sports Illustrated? Yes. Okay. I, and honestly, for that time, honestly, and at that time, I I thought it was very very good money. So I was getting I got a day rate just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Worked for the month for the Olympics, and then finished off my time in Spain. I was. I was working at the World's Fair. That was a good year for Spain because the World's Fair was going on in southern Spain, in Sevilla. And so I was working. Amazing. Uh, and I was working there for a company that had the food in the American Pavilion. So mm -hmm. I was working there for the essentially the six months, but then took a break for a month to go work the Olympics and came back. Incredible. And was literally wrapping hamburgers and hot dogs and fries. Yes. And did that. And was trying to figure out, how do I stay in Spain and do the sports thing? How do I do yes. it? Because I am in love with both of these things. And I had been in Spain a year. I was in a groove. And I just, there was no way. I couldn't figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. So I came home. Did you speak, do you speak Spanish mm -hmm. fluently? Mm -hmm. At the time, it was very, very good. Yeah. It was very good. And it and went on to serve dialect? me in my career. Um, I usually, because Catalan. I was. I, yeah, both. Yeah, both. both. But when you're in the South, you really get this. Because I studied in Alicante. And okay. I didn't know any Spanish whatsoever. But okay. it was just, it's the most incredible place in the world. I mean, Spain, all of it. But you got better when you were there. I got there. better. Right. And I, that's well, what yeah, you do. I lived with a host family. So yeah, I had to. And you and you hear the lingo, which is Correct. different from what we te Correct. they teach us Correct. in books, right? Yeah. Such a great thing. Yes. That's, that's amazing. So you couldn't figure out in Spain. So then what? Came home, chased the Olympics in Atlanta because I had been there and I thought, okay, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to do that. So I moved to Atlanta right away. I had a friend Brian Sexton, who I love, is still a good friend and lives mm -hmm. in San Diego. His sister was a producer for CNN Sports Night, Sports Tonight, with Nick Charles and Fred Hickman. That's amazing. And Bob Lorenz and Vince Cellini. And he, he said, maybe my sister can help you. So I got an internship, a free internship in 1993 at CNN Sports through Maura Sexton, who lives wow. in Atlanta. And I stayed on her couch for two weeks until I got an apartment. And I went, I got an internship at CNN Sports 93 and was waiting on tables and to pay my rent. Mm -hmm. And I loved every minute of the internship and was even doubly sure that that's what I wanted to do. 
Isn't that incredible? And I would go in at four o'clock in the afternoon and label, speaking of digital and, and written, label the tapes. <laughs> well, our team here, Blue Vision, they have, so we have our producer who's Stover over in Portland, but I mean, we all have to figure out a way to categorize because you're producing content. So you need to categorize so that you can repurpose that content. But labeling, we're doing that digitally because if there's not a system, then guess what? He won't be able to find it. They won't be able to find it. And then when I say, hey, remember when we interviewed Billy Ray? Like, I'd like to see that, yep. that content. Right. Well, back in the day, you actually had to physically label the tape and then put that tape. And I was there somewhere. at 4 o'clock. <laughs> it was Kansas, Oklahoma, first half. Right? Kansas, Oklahoma, second half. And I would do all, whatever the games were. They had an area of about four or five chairs at CNN where all the interns sat and looked at the games and logged the highlights. Wow. And so I would get in there at 4. I was so excited to get in there. I would label them, and then I would get assigned a couple games just like the other interns. And we would sit there and look at these little monitors with our log sheets and log the games and then the editors and producers would hit us throughout the night and say give me the top three plays give me the top play give me the top four plays what did Ricky Williams do who what did this person do no way and so I'm logging and then I would then they would ask for our help and we would what year is this this is 93 so 93 because that's Sports Center really what year? What, what time that, are you talking about? That ESPN, was, the birth of ESPN was like I don't 80, remember. early 80s? Yeah, early. It was with MTV. Yeah, but this this was... So this was like 10 years in. So it's not that far in, really, right, for but cable this television. Was, they because were, CNN had been far in, right? Yeah, and CNN Sports was the... Was legit. Le, absolutely. Totally legit. Dan absolutely. Patrick was there. Exactly. Nancy Newman was there. They were terrific people. They were beautiful because people. Because when you wanted news, you went to CNN. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anytime They're, you wanted. Correct. Anytime right. you wanted. Right. Yeah. So I locked that in, fell in love with it even more, finished that internship, and then got a job. I was selling tickets for the Atlanta Braves for five bucks an hour. I was working operations for the Atlanta Hawks where I would put the cones out during halftime. Just and anywhere to get close. Anywhere to get in. And yeah. then I got a job as an um, as a production coordinator at Sport South, which okay. was the regional sports network under Turner Sports. And I was booking. I've heard of them. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, they're pretty big. But this was, the, at this time, this was before it was Fox Sports South. This was under the Turner Sports umbrella. Okay. And at that time, they had um, Ernie Johnson Sr. and Jr. were doing Braves games. Oh, wow. And Tim Brando was doing Hawks games. And I was doing, uh, booking a lot of their travel, for example. Uh -huh. But... I still had my dream, and so we had the rights to so many games, including a lot of SEC stuff, a lot of ACC stuff, including all the pros, Braves, Hawks. And I went to the executive producer and just said, if you ever have, I'll do sideline, I'll do whatever you need. If you need somebody to cover a game in my off time, I'll do it. Please let me do Why it. Why did you go to him? Because he's the EP and he's the one that books the talent. So you, but did you have a relationship or? Did well, he you was just my knew? he was my boss. Oh, he was. Your Sorry, boss. so okay. I was essentially his production coordinator. Okay. So it's a it's a at times it's kind of an exact because part of it is just you're just trying to figure out how does this whole thing work, mm -hmm. like how do things happen, mm -hmm. and then you figure out there's certain people in any organization that are doing a little bit different work than the rest of it, no matter right. what their position is. And right. You're like, I need to go either learn from them or ask. Right. Ask. And if you don't go learn, if you don't go ask, you won't get anything. Right. Right. Ask you can work, work, then... work, 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 but you at least need to say, hey, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. How do I get there? Mm -hmm. And then now they have a vested interest, mm -hmm. right? They have a much more vested interest and in say, well, let's help Katie out. Like when they're in that meeting, all of a sudden your name comes up, like they're thinking about it. Right. Well, I think she has the ambition to do it because no one else came to ask. She has the ambition. We need somebody yep, to your point. Yep. Right. Correct. Right. Top of mind. Is when was, yeah, Top of Mind is one of my favorite books mm -hmm. by John Hall, but it's, it, it, it's exactly that. It's, you're, you're not top of mind unless you are, and that's part of being in the content funnel, but being a good person and also being, letting your intentions known. Right. And making sure that you're keeping your regular job tight. Yes. Well, yeah. So because they trust that's, you. Mm -hmm. That's your resume, right? Mm -hmm. That's literally your work, your mm -hmm. word, who you are as a person. When was your on first on-camera moment? Uh, besides high school. Besides I did that. high school, yeah. I was um, Tiki Barber package. Tiki Barber. In college. Really? Uh-huh. So. That what, was my first tell, package. And By package, what do you mean? Uh, it's, in t it's a t it's a phrase it's a TV phrase and a package is a story essentially so say so you're assigned a um, story you're assigned a story and then you go interview the athlete and then you tell it and you use 
So it's what Jim does, Jim Trotter. It's what every NFL, broadcaster does. What every does. broadcaster mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. So they, you're assigned the story. So if you say, so say we find out Kawhi Leonard's going to, he's going to. Well, they're going to retire his jersey at San Diego State, which they just announced right. on February 1st. So which, say you get that assignment. Yes. You get that assignment. You go, you talk to Kawhi. You, if you can. Yes. Generally speaking. Yes. This is the rules. <laughs> Uh, you talk to him, and then you tell a story, and so using your voice, the information, and his interview. It's and the do same. they give you the parameters of the story, as in like you're going to get a five minute segment, a two minute segment? Yeah, that's what a pro- that's the role of a producer. So okay. a producer, depending on where it's going to fit, whether it's a long format show or a short show, they could say, "Hey, give me, um, I need you to do a, a Kawhi react story. I only I, a minute thirty. Or they'll say, hey, can you do a Kawhi React story? Can you make it five minutes? Mm-hmm. And uh, so once you get the time, then you figure out what you got to get in there. And how- so then, But that content is produced strictly for the one platform, which is the broadcast. Um, now, they, or, now, or it's repurposed. Right. now it's repurposed for the Internet. But back in the day before of the world we live in, it mm-hmm. wasn't shared on Twitter. It wasn't shared right. you know, on Instagram as a story. Right. It was... This is for this time slot. But you could also do, if you did, say I did a Kawhi Leonard for five minutes, they would also ask you, they could also cut down a minute 30 version for this other show. Yes. You know, because how it, often were they doing that? It just it depends. depended on how good the story was. It also depends on so Sports South was a regional sports network, so that was seven southeastern states. That's a lot of views. That's yeah. a lot of so they had various shows, whether it was ACC Today or Braves. So they could repurpose that stuff and and say, hey, I mean, obviously, if it was Chipper Jones, it's different. Hey, Chipper Jones's jersey got retired today. Katie Temple talked with him earlier. Yes, that would work. That goes in it. That can be in an SEC. They can make that relevant in an SEC. Sure. And they can and make pro. it nation, nationwide relevant. Mm-hmm. Chipper, sure. yeah, yeah, and Kawhi, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of that was my first package was the Tiki Barber one. Did you have any mistakes on camera that you learned from? How many mistakes? What, <laughs> do you remember a particular mistake? How about that? Oh my gosh! So back. So let's bring it full circle to the Katie Temple Media Coaching. When you're bringing on a new client, a new CEO. Mm-hmm. Typically, you're working with CEOs mm-hmm. and uh, athletes. And athletes. Mm-hmm. So CEOs and athletes. What is step one? Step one is to define goals. Mm-hmm. And what messaging I, is that? Would it be? It would depends it be on their goals okay. because what happens is. You, you find out what they're looking for. Some people, for example, already know what they want to say. They just are tightened up and have an incredible set of nerves. A lot of people, it's nerves-based. Nerves-based of the microphone, of the... Because that's the, that's the craziest thing about the world that we're living in, is you're, the skills that you're teaching are so valuable because literally every single person in their pocket can become a broadcaster, mm-hmm. can be a public relation. And, mm-hmm. It is the fear. It's mm-hmm. the fear of what, well, I'm out of shape. Like, you know, it's like, I know I'm out of shape. Like, do I really look like, yeah, actually, actually I do look like that. <laughs> but what do you do? How do you get them over? Because that's almost a psychological. It's more, it, it it's is more psycholo- psychological. It is psychological. Else, right? And that's the, the general fear is being judged for all of us. That's yes. it. That's the thing for all of us who are going to either go get ready for an interview or go talk, do a presentation, public speaking, do a creative video, or sure. actually even talk to the media. Well, if a CEO gets appointed by a board of directors, mm-hmm. maybe they maybe they haven't met every one of them, or maybe it's going to question why did we pick that person to be mm-hmm. the spokesperson for our company mm-hmm. if they can't even say form a sentence together and, and tell us what their cause is. Right. Right. And a lot of times the CEOs are obviously by definition have are hungry to a certain extent and successful to a certain extent. Yes. Right. The challenge there is now in the tech world where there's really, really, really talented people working on beautiful products. Yes. And they've been focused on that. And then all of a sudden now they're the CEO. So people want to talk to them. Yes. And that n- n- needs transition time. It's a huge transition. Huge transition. It's a huge it, hearing yourself on audio for the first time is like hearing yourself back when you would leave a voicemail like do I sound like that Mm -hmm. oh my god I can't believe my voice sounds Mm -hmm. like that and you have to get over that and move on to okay well next now what it makes people shudder yes to hear their voice to see them on video it makes people shudder and I tell them that's normal yes that's normal let's fight through it today let's push let's fight through it so what what kind of tips do you give them it just kind of depends on what they're looking for in other words if 
it, it depends. Again, you asked criteria. If somebody really maybe just needs help with their messaging, they need, listen, I've got all these ideas in my head. I need to make it succinct. Because if you're doing video yes. or anything, you want to make it succinct. Yes. And so I can work with them and they could be fine with all the presence and the delivery and the intonation and everything's fine. Versus um, I've got the, the content's great. I've got it but now I just need help with my eye contact or now I just need help with my nerves or now I need help with my body language, body language. Right. Yeah. So there, don't, there can be one like or the this. other. Sit, right. Sit straight. And you then know, others. Because and we all have, we all have ticks, right? We all have mm -hmm. things that we don't even know we do until you're, I mean, that's why video is so powerful for coaching It's until a baseball player sees their swing. You could tell them all until they're blue in the face and you're like, this is what I told you. Thank <laughs> you, told Tony. You, take a look. Thank you, Tony. Right. That's all Tony. Yes. When? I mean, that's exactly, I use that example all the time. Guess what? You watch yourself on video. What'd you see? Go back and do it again. Right. Go back. Did you love it? I didn't love it, but I liked it. Okay. What would you like to do differently? I want to do this. All right, do it. Try it. Now let's look at it. Really? So then all of the sudden, whether you're comfortable or not, you know what it feels like to look the way that you want to look, but you have to work at it because you don't know what you don't know. And yes. then you just start to work at it. God, I feel really confident. But when I look at the video, I don't look confident. All right, let's let's get you to where you feel confident and you look confident. And everybody, while my program is fundamental and it's very, it's it's three buckets. It's on camera presentation, messaging, and delivery. And then we dive into the messaging, and then we dive into the delivery. So there is a set program, and then everybody else has their specific things they want to work on. So we can do we can dive in. We can how do really you, dive how in. How do you dive into messaging? Because I think that's super important in the attention world that we live in because every single platform is different every you need to know what audience you're speaking to yes, correct yes that's part of the for program for the attention yep, so how, how do you go about that that's well you got to think about who am i talking to mm -hmm. Who am I talking to? Um, is it sixth graders? Is it people in the industry? Is it um, my um, competition? Is it the people in my business? Then, because you want to think about relatability with your language. If I'm talking to six year olds or millennials, maybe my language is going to be a little different. If I'm talking to people, if I'm take, talking to baby boomers, yeah. if I'm talking to people in the industry, I can use slang. But if I'm talking to people in a local TV station, I got to keep it generic because there's a general audience. And that's where the verbiage and the relatability comes in. How can I use examples? I want to use examples that will speak to them. Yes. So you want to think about, okay, who are they? And how do I want to make them feel? Yes. Because we are connected on emotion and we purchase by emotion. Storytelling. Clearly. The clearly, biggest. Clearly told, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not telling a story, that's not going to compel anyone to action. But you get compelled once there's a story loop. Once there's either, I mean, that's, everyone's their own protagonist right mm -hmm. in, in our own play so, right but how whatever product or service you're offering that's either going to become the solution or it's going to help them avoid failure right and which is the, so the way that that's you got, how you bring someone in right right you've got to your point it's all about storytelling which is messaging but now that's the buzzword which is awesome yes and the first thing is that we I like to tell my clients is that the brain work here's how the brain works we remember information at least 30 percent more when it's told through story so that's one thing retention's a big one and then also we're connecting on story we're connecting by emotion we're connecting by humor we're connecting with common passions common goals there's various ways that you can connect with the story but that's a big one is helping clients kind of tell their story and people are challenged all of us are challenged because they have all these great things in their heads and it's hard to get them out so it takes a lot of brainstorming and really deciding all right this is a have to have we really really have to have this stuff and this information is nice to have great nice to have let's figure it out I think it's fascinating too, especially because the work that you're doing, it, it's so important for the voice of the brand, mm -hmm. the voice of the mission, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the voice of the mission has other people that they, he or she has to go and respond to, correct? So they go back mm -hmm. with your your advice, and, you right. know, you, what you've taught them, but they also have to teach that to everyone else. Right. Because it's important that everyone buys into that. 
because that's the heart of why anyone's coming to whatever organization they're coming to, right? Right, right. And branding is huge. And honestly, to your point, I'm happy and have worked with their marketing department. Sometimes it's it's, it's really, almost essential. I love the collaboration, especially when you've got really, really smart branding yes. people and they're cl really clever and they know they know what they need. And I we can merge those. We merge those ideas together. Well, every marketing department needs content. Yes. And if you're working with the CEO and producing content, content like they need to be repurposing that content mm -hmm. because eventually they're going to go hey we need stuff mm -hmm. like well what do we do when he when our ceo when she was on you know on the local news mm -hmm. where where is that right is that on youtube no is it on instagram no well why aren't these things happening right like that's the disc that's the connect once that connect does happen then it's magic right because then you're like well he's everywhere right but they didn't even see the news they saw him on Twitter. Right. You know, they saw the clip on Twitter, but that uh, that message resonated with them to say, hey, they're raising money for blood cancer. Right. I just heard our neighbor that got diagnosed with blood cancer. Now they're compelled to act. See how that works. It's amazing. And that's what they switching topics to Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Yes. And I know that you are a man of the year candidate which how I'm, do you know that because how I, did you come to that knowledge because I nominated you. <laughs> yes Katie nominated me and I think that you're gonna be great and I knew that it was a really smart idea and when Hadley Weiss and I went to talk to you about it at Cali Comfort we were in the car on our way down there and I said I, f I feel good about this one I think that he gets it he understands it and I knew about your giving heart from Dave and Jeff yes and CS and Trotter yes and and I knew that you were doing a lot of stuff on social media and I knew you were local and I didn't know everything before we had that talk that mm -hmm. I do now as to why you're gonna crush it but I knew I felt really good about you saying yes and we're really excited to have you on board well, I can't tell you for me it's so humbling and it's such a huge responsibility but somebody mm -hmm. that is as connected as you are and as loved as you are to go through your contact list and to pick me it's it's I, I, I feel the weight of that but I also embrace it because um, you know we've had to keep our small restaurant open and the way that we did that and the way that we differentiated ourselves was because of what's happened with the cell phone and that's literally the essence of digital hospitality it's that every business needs to be in the digital business right. and every business needs to be in the hospitality business right so even if you're an e-commerce company you need to treat people like people Things happen when people sit down and have a conversation. When you put that conversation on the internet, more people get a seat at the table that mm -hmm. might not have been able to. Mm -hmm. We don't pay for it. You can listen to the podcast. You can listen to it on YouTube. You can watch it on IGTV. We're going to try to be as many places as possible because it's that important for whatever we're doing, whatever gets us out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. If we want to cure cancer, mm -hmm. we need to get as loud as possible about y it. Yep, and you're going to you're going to run into people and I know we talked about this before, but like your neighbor, the more you talk to people, the more you're going to realize how many people are affected it's by already it. Already happened. The more that I ingrain what I'm doing, the campaign that I'm about to embark on into my conversations digitally and in person, the more that people are telling me my uncle, you know, was diagnosed. Um, and that's very sad. Mm -hmm. But that's also what makes the mission that strong. Yep. And we love LLS because the money goes to research and they are relentless here. They are relentless. It's I mean, that that's that's correct. And that's part of the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. I was telling Hadley, um, who was with us. Hadley at the meeting. Weiss. We love Hadley, Hadley Weiss. Weiss. She's amazing. And they're going to have 15 candidates this mm -hmm. year. So 15 candidates. That's You're on the committee, right? Yeah. You're on the recruiting recruiting side. Mm -hmm. um, so 15 men and women of the year candidates mm -hmm. for the San Diego Hawaii chapter, mm -hmm. which is, is that the most ever? I don't know if it's the most ever. We'll it's, it's, almost, it's almost double than what we had last That's year. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So part of what my campaign team, our mission is what, our mission was as a restaurant, what our mission is as a podcast, what our mission is as a media company, and that's that a rising tide lifts all ships. Mm -hmm. So as much as we're all competing as candidates to raise our own individual amounts, it's so important that as a chapter, we show that we can all raise whatever that bucket of money is and do it in a way that hasn't been done before because of things like audio, video, written word mm -hmm. and publishing to the internet and having conversations that people aren't willing to have. Yep. 
And that's the exciting part. Right. And that you're going to touch a lot of hearts. You're going to touch a lot of hearts through this process. Well, I mean, the, to be frankly honest, the, you know, the toughest conversation that I had was with me and with, was with my wife, Rositsa. When we, you know, when you talked to me, I told you I, I'm in, but I can't be in unless my wife I is know. in. And we, when I went, the reason why I'm married to her is because of her heart mm -hmm. and how amazing of a woman she is. And as parents, we have my son, Colleen, is two, two, two years old, two, two and a half. My daughter's seven months old, Mila. And you don't even want to have those kinds of thoughts in your head. Right. And like, to be honest with you, that, that was it. It's, we can't think of the devastation that somebody feels, a family feels, when the doctor walks in the room and says that your child has cancer. Right. It's me. Right. Who are you? That's who are you to not try to help? Right. I get it, and I get it, and it's important, and that's all we have to do is just keep. But marching by not forward. having the conversation, we can't pretend that it doesn't happen. Right. Because all these incredible people in San Diego, not just in LLS, but in all these cancer organizations, need to understand that we're we're all fighting this thing together. Yep. Because it's the, it's impacting everybody, right? You know, and how and how do we clear up our messaging? Back to what you said. Yep. Keep it clean. Keep it clean and quick, concise. Poignant, passionate. Tell the story. Yes, tell the story in a way that compels people to action. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's mm -hmm. what the greatest nonprofits, the people that are doing the that that are changing the world. That's what they're able to do. Right. Because there's a lot of noise, right? Mm -hmm. That's the other thing that you run up on, especially now. A lot, a lot of noise, a lot of people asking for everything, and you just gotta keep your head down. Yeah, and keep I think you know part of what you what we're talking about with your your program that you do for for coaching, a lot of it too, back to the insecurities of being on camera. Right. Uh, that goes to the insecurities of publishing on the internet. Mm -hmm. Is well, what if I post something and nobody likes it? Right. Was it true? Was it authentic? Was it what you wanted to say? Keep doing it. Right. It's not about how many people like it. It's not about how many followers you have. It's about being consistent in you or in your mission or in your brand. Because eventually, if you're true to what you're trying to do, yep. it'll resonate. But it, it, it takes practice. Right. It takes right? practice and it takes time and habits. You know, you're changing habits. It yes. takes at the very least, at the very least, 21 days, 22 days to change a habit at least. And that's, and you want to do it a little bit, just chip away at it a little bit at a time. I can't believe you just said that. So David Meltzer hopefully will be my mentor. Um, he does. He's at Sports One Marketing. You and I talked mm -hmm. about it. Um, but I went up to his office because he sent an open invite to the internet that anyone that's willing to go. But he was doing it for his in, for his interns. Mm -hmm. um, I've been up to, to that. Yeah, and to recognize his employees. But he was talking about treating every day as your New Year's Day. But really, the exponential power of doing some doing something daily. You know, back to the Einstein theory that the eighth wonder of the world is exponential. And what he talked about resonated so much with me that I started, I mean, I, I started running. And I didn't start on the first of the year, but I started this week. Mm -hmm. Today was day four of my nice, running. Nice, And it's just the habit. You know, it, it's just doing, it's building the habit every single day. And the funniest thing is that out of all the posting that I do, on all the different platforms, the thing that's resonated the most is this daily sunrise gratitude where I'm out exercising. I'm having people, because it's a universal language. We all want to be better, and whether it's encouragement or seeing someone else do it. And I've watched people that I admire do the same thing, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize what they were doing at the time. You know, people like Kyle Whistle, like Tabitha, um, like David Meltzer, like Gary Vaynerchuk, like yourself, you're publishing much more. but the, Dave and Jeff are a perfect example. Mm -hmm. They're willing to talk about the deepest, darkest things that they're going through, and that's what resonates. Mm -hmm. That's what goes through. Mm -hmm. What they have done has is spectacular, what they have done with that podcast. And the amount of tragedy and loss that they've had to go through while doing it mm -hmm. because they've gone through success, and then they went right back down, mm -hmm. you know, with Jake's projects and the loss of – back to the messaging it's you just don't know what you say once you're true and authentic and you share that message that's what that's what resonates mm -hmm. 
you know, we have Brian um, and his wife from Hot Sauces and More. They listened to the podcast that I did with Dave Palais, and his wife wasn't planning on listening, but they lost their daughter two years earlier. And she said when she came into the room and she heard the podcast, she had never heard somebody explain that type of pain that she was feeling because Dave was explaining how Rita's crying herself to sleep at night and how he can't sleep and he wakes up and it's like someone threw cold ice on his face every single day because mm-hmm. Jake's not there. Mm-hmm. She said that they've been going to therapy for five, for five different therapists and therapists keep saying, I know what you're going through. And Brian says, fuck you. You don't know what I'm going through. Have you lost a child? And they go, no. But what Dave said mm-hmm. resonated, mm-hmm. helped, mm-hmm. healed. He is brave. I can't believe how brave he's been. The way that, to your point, the way that he is open to discussing every detail, how calm, how calm he is, how he listens, how he's available. You know, you shoot him a text, he's available and present and open to all of this and wanting to help everybody else and stop other families from going through that type of pain and he's proactive about it and I'm guessing it's hard to get out of bed every day it's got to or be. hard to breathe yeah and he's handled it with so much grace and confidence that it's impressive still even even every day when I hear their podcast and the way that they talk about it or if there's a post on social media mm-hmm. It's it. He's just brave. Very, very brave. But that that bravery, it's it's amazing because it helps other people. I mean, Mm -hmm. just having him on the podcast, he said that over the summer, four different parents came to talk to him about depression and about their children, their children's suicide attempts. Right. That's horrific. But the fact that they came to talk to him meant that they knew that he was there and available, that he had gone through that. Right. Because that stuff carries stigma, and we're trying to get rid of the stigma with mental health. We're trying. Everyone's trying to get rid of the stigma, but it's still hard, and it gave them the confidence and the comfort to come talk to him, even though it was uncomfortable. And he's presented that platform. It's just, yeah. He's he's special. He's he's special. Very, Mm -hmm. very. And, you know, that's, I mean, there are, they're amazing storytellers, which is what's compelled me to listen to them for you know over 20 years and compelled me to support their podcast. And eventually, because I was willing to send a tweet to literally to Jim Trotter and uh, Jeff when they were on the radio, Jim was promoting his book, and it was the book about Junior Seau. Junior book, and yeah. they were talking about how they used to go to fight night at Junior Seau's restaurant with C.S. Keys. And if it wasn't a call to action for me saying, hey, Cali Comfort, we're hosting Fight Night. Why don't you come out? Then I wouldn't have as close of friends that I do right. that I have in Dave and that I have in Jeff right. and that I have in Jim and you know the late CS Keys, who obviously we we, we have we share. so much love for. Mm-hmm. Um, but those guys are all. That's a good circle. They're great all circle. In, integrity based. And I remember Jim Trotter is s- such a smart, smart guy with such a great perspective i mean when i met him he was a beat writer yes for the chargers for the, chargers. For the union tribute tough i've years. known him since <laughs> around 99 t- uh-huh. tough, tough years and i'll tell you years. what and i was around the locker room with him for six years from 99 to 05 when i was covering san diego sports and especially the chargers we were there all the time and when he was the beat reporter and he was calm and he was professional and he did not he didn't give up i mean he asked the 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 hard questions but he did it in a way that was presentable and not in your face and it was really really great he was he was great for me to watch to look up to and just watch the way that he handled his business i mean when jerry jones got gets inducted to the hall of fame the espn the person that they choose to go cover the story and fly in Mm -hmm. jerry's helicopter is jim trotter Mm -hmm. and that's not because they chose but Jerry had to approve that too. Right, for sure. So his work speaks for itself. Right. Um, and he, I mean, covering the Chargers isn't easy. And I, and I know that sounds, that's, <laughs> that's an understatement, right? That Very was, big I mean, understatement. yes. No, and that was hard he, work. It was hard work on yeah. a lot of levels. For sure. On the field, off the field kind of stuff. And he, he just, he was a pro. So back to the Katie Temple media coaching. Mm-hmm. What, um, what kind of quick advice can you tell somebody that's, fearful about 
that taking that first step about about pressing record about just going live on Facebook well I mean there's various things I mean if you think about just do the there's the phrase progress over perfection right so the first just get the first one done um, there's various ways to help people out of their own head but I mean what I really like to tell people when it comes to their nerves is especially if you're doing a talk or you're excelling at work and you are being asked to present something or if you want to start creating videos because it's been a passion of yours I like to remind them that nerves are not a bad thing nerves are a good thing it means that something exciting is at stake and exciting is happening and that you're taking risks when other people are too scared to and that you're following your passion which is not always easy and you're going against the grain and these are all things to really celebrate and so if you weren't doing great or scary um, things then you wouldn't be nervous yes so nerves are normal and I just let them know just when you start getting all tightened up smile and remember I'm I'm taking control of my life and I'm doing great things and I feel you nerves I feel you and I'm grateful for you but I got this and it doesn't have to feel okay I tell my clients I still feel in at channel 8 doing sports recently after 25 years I went I was at the desk last time doing and I felt the nerves in my stomach <laughs> I walked up to the desk and I felt them in my stomach and I thought all right I I hear you I feel you I, I feel you thank you for protecting me but I'm gonna focus get present staying presence really helpful check yourself and tell the story and if you can focus on staying present with your message and getting that point across then that also helps you get out of your head that's great advice but own all the all the uncomfortable part of it just that's be great. comfortable with the uncomfortable and then that is phenomenal advice because that's part of, when I first started going on camera at local news stations talking about barbecue I'm like what the fuck am I why do they want to hear from me right. like there's people in Kansas City there's people in Austin like there's people in Memphis they should be talking to them about barbecue not talking to me but then I was worried about the camera and then worried about this and worried, it's like stop which is normal and just stop right like who's going to judge me they're going to judge me no matter what right like they're either going to judge me no matter what so just work on it right Be but present. people like me can help you get ready for those this interviews, is true right this is that true. stuff is well exactly the exactly what you said is so valuable and that's why people need to have those conversations mm -hmm. because like I said in the beginning we we all specialize in something that we're hopefully passionate about mm -hmm. that it, you're excited that get mm -hmm. you're excited it gets you out of bed it's what you think about when you go to sleep mm -hmm. if you're not doing that you need to stop doing what you're doing and find out what you love to do but if you are doing that even if you are doing that we all need help everybody we all need help everybody. in this digital age we all need help mm -hmm. I mean things are happening so fast and the worst thing you can do is create something amazing something that you love to create whether it's a product or a service and then no one knows about it right Right, but it's really great. <laughs> but it's really great. I just need someone to hear really it. Great. It's, I just need. It's, I just need one viral video. No, you need viral videos on all the platforms all the time. Right. That's really what. That's what we're talking about. Right. Because that's how we're going to cure cancer. I, I can't wait to see what you do. Well, it's what we are going to do because right. you're on the team. I, I, just I don't got, know what all the just rules got are. Another nominee. I don't, we I don't just know got what all the rules are, on. but everyone's on the team. Right. Everyone's as far as I'm concerned, team. everyone is on this team, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's that's the honest truth. And the more that we can all help each other work towards that goal and get the people that are working so hard at these incredible research institutes the money that they need to do what they need to do then we're going to do it i remember this room that we're shooting this in is at the lls office in san diego and we had our workshop last year when i was a candidate for woman of the year which you're going to have your workshop on february 8th which is just essentially getting everybody dialed in and meeting everybody and getting ready to go for the competition and we were in here and um, i remember meeting gordon cook who is the man of last year's man of the year right there between me and zainab that's gordon cook watch it on youtube you can see it yeah if you're listening then subscribe to our youtube channel so you can see it and he was a candidate for man of the year last year and won but I remember meeting him at this at the workshop and he was pale and he had blood coming out of his nose he had just had a treatment he has multiple myeloma and here he is on a Saturday clearly not feeling well and he's gonna do his best to raise money for blood cancer and you're like and raised by the way 175 grand oh my goodness in 10 weeks that's how long the in campaign 10 is. weeks 10 he's... weeks one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. yep that's incredible so you're doing you're doing good 
well, we're getting started. Mm-hmm. We're going to get started by Yeah, but you're committed. You're locked in. So. Oh, yeah, I signed up. I you mean, signed up. You, you get all of me. It's mm-hmm. There's no... I don't, there's no cruise control and it's all gas. Good. It's all gas. Good. We go. Good. Once we're flying the flag, we're flying the flag. Until there's a cure. That's right. Keep going. That's right. So we're going to put all the, uh, all your social handles in the show notes. Okay. So that people can tweet at you. They can follow you on Instagram. They can okay. follow you on Facebook. They can I go probably to your need website. a little, I probably need a little digital hospitality. We'll help you out with I'm that. I'm grinding we'll on help my business you out that. right now. That's, that's the most important it's thing. The most important thing is asking for help. Mm-hmm. Like we said, it's like we all can't figure it all out by ourselves mm-hmm. until I started adding these teammates um, to what we're doing. I couldn't do what we're doing. So we, we love the videographers and the men and women that make us look good and yes. sound good and clear and have a vision and then edit. We love editors so much. Right. We love. We, we love, love you. You hear that? Aaron love and you, Brandon. Aaron. Yes. And Brandon. Yes. And Stover, who's going to produce the episode. The and I, th- I think that's. I mean, that's, it's crucial information because iHeart's laying off people. Mm-hmm. They're going through bankruptcy. There's radios suffering. Newspapers are suffering. TV stations are feeling it. There's so many creative people that love what they do. They just need to know that there's other opportunities, and that opportunity is going to be in new media. Right. It's going to be in new media. And what that looks like, it's going to change every single day. Video, baby. But we're going to be there. Video. Video, audio, written word. Those mm-hmm. will never go away. Nope. That's storytelling, right? Correct. Correct. Very excited. Correct. You're amazing. Thanks Thank for you. having me on. Congrats on Thank you. on th- your new adventure. Thank you. We're uh, we're grateful for everybody that tunes into uh, Digital Hospitality, follows us on the show, social channels, asks for help, lets us know um, how you can help because we're going to be asking for help uh, beating blood cancer. Yeah, you are. Send that link out, baby. March. Oh, we will. What's the March twenty second? March twenty fifth, I believe. March twenty fifth is I'd the first day of eligibility. We're going to do a behind the scenes episode with Hadley. She's got all the secrets, so. Watch that on YouTube because uh, we're going to go deep inside what it takes to run a local chapter of the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Are you going to have a barbecue event? That's what I want to know. Every day is a barbecue event. But I mean a barbecue event. With, is Ivan going to help you? Of course. I mean, if you're yes. part of the West Coast Barbecue yes. Movement, yes. I've already signed you up. So yes. It's, it's, it's happening. Yes. It's just a matter of, that's just figuring out the dates. Throw some bourbon in there if yes. you don't mind. All the dates. Everybody... If you're on the list, you're getting contacted. We're going to have a big party. Bourbon That's and barbecue sure. to beat cancer. That's for sure. That's for sure happening. It writes itself. Katie, you're amazing. Thanks for having me. Thank you.